Hey guys, Marv Talks Wrestling here. Welcome to my WWE Hell in a Cell 2016 results review. And uh, I'm still like not in my best mood. Um, obviously, I just woke up. My hair is obviously a mess, I know. Don't bug me about it. Um, as happy as, like, as, as down as I may sound, I actually thought uh, Hell in a Cell was actually a really good pay-per-view. You know, I believe it's one of the best of 2016. One of the best pay-per-views of 2016. To say it's the best, I think it's a little too soon to say that, but I think it's uh, fair enough to say it's, it is definitely one of the best. We complained about too many Hell in a Cell matches in one night, then we ended up getting spectacular Hell in a Cell matches in one night. And we even had good matches that weren't part of Hell in a Cell. So, um, yeah, but as I said, I'm still not in my best mood, but I'm here. I'm not queer. Here are all the results of review for WWE Hell in a Cell 2016. Uh, let's get started. So let's begin with the kickoff show. Um, Cedric Alexander, Lince Dorito, and Sin Cara defeated Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, and Araya Daivari. Um, I actually thought it was a really good match. Good way to kick off the show. Hence the name kickoff show, kickoff match. Um, the baby faces won, which really have no problem with that. That's usually what happens in the kickoff show. Um, once again, as I mentioned, good match. Good six-man tag. Cruiserweights obviously have a lot of pro have a lot to show. In the cruiserweight division, which I believe is sh they should like just get rid of the purple stuff. Like you know, they're already part of the main roster, so they, you know, it, there's no need for purple stuff. Plus, it's a lot of work for the crew that work at ringside. They they don't get credited. It. I don't know why people should just thank them because they work. They bust their ass off. You know, painting all those ropes purple, at uh, adjusting the ring mats. It's a lot of hard work, I would assume, and to do in like 30 seconds. So, props off to them. I tip my hat to uh, anyone who had to work with uh, the Purple Rope stuff. Anyways, um, Cedric Alexander looking great as usual. He's always... I, he, I remember his fantastic match against Kota Ibushi at the Cruiserweight Classic. But, um, eh, good match. Uh, Baby Faces won. So WWE likes to advertise the triple main event stuff, but we all know we're not dumb enough. We all know we're not dumb. There's only one main event, and that's the last match. Um, that's the last match of the show. But obviously, the triple main event, they want to advertise that, and then they want to start the show off with with a main event. Um, the United States Championship match, which took place inside of Hell in a Cell, and it was Roman Reigns defending against Rusev. Rusev, who was fighting for his country. Fighting for his wife, fighting for his family, and yet we were, and yet WWE expects us to boo him, just because he's Bulgarian, just because he's foreign. But yet Roman Reigns, he's been a prick, stealing cocktail, and also slut shaming Lana like a dick, and we're supposed to cheer him because he's half American. Uh, but yeah. Rusev's actually the real babyface. We all know that. He had that never say at, at he had to never say die attitude last night. Roman Reigns no sold everything. He had that bulletproof vest. Obviously those candlesticks to the rib, those candlestick shots to the rib. They did not hurt. They um and then Rusev gets like candlestick shots to the throat. Yet we're supposed to boo him. I don't understand WWE logic, but it was actually a good match. I think it was a good match. Um, he was just mainly throwing people around, throwing people at things. But, uh, and it's a good show. Not the best Hell in a Cell match. I think it's, like, the, the least best. Because I don't want to say the worst Hell in a Cell match of the night. Because worst is kind of, like, derogatory terms. But I'm just going to say the least best Hell in a Cell match. Out of three that we're on tonight. But, yeah. Roman Reigns won. Not a surprise. We all knew Roman Reigns was winning. Um, but accolade on the steel steps with the chain. That was a good touch. Bailey defeated Dana Brooke. There's not much to say about this match. I really did not think it was a good match. I mean, ba Bailey is a fantastic worker. Don't get me wrong, but really, it was this match really didn't draw me too much. I'm sorry. I love Bailey, but it, it, it just didn't work out for me. Luke Ellis and Carl Anderson defeated Enzo and Cass. It was a pretty quick match, in my opinion. I thought it ended a bit too soon. That super kick though by Luke Gallows was freaking awesome. Um, but yeah, Luke Gallows and Kari Anderson, as short as the match was, they really needed this win. I love Enzo and Cass, but 
Luke Allen's Carl Anderson desperately needed this win. It's good It's good that they did win, so kudos to them. Um, hopefully they can find success later, because I, I don't think they can ever recover from the old day. Oh, boy, how freaking disastrous was that. And then up next, we had what I thought was match of the night. Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins for the WWE Universal Championship inside of Hell in a Cell. Holy crap, that powerbomb through the two tables was, oh my gosh, my, mm, it was tasty. Um, Then we had Chris Jericho running in, good heel work, obviously, you know, continuing the storyline of his friendship. Uh, Really, I can't say much about this match other than it was freaking fantastic. I think it was match of the night. Um, some may disagree with it, but that's completely fine. Opinions belong to everyone. But uh, I did think it was a really great, fantastic match, match of the night. Not a five-star match, but still, really good match. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin Owens retained after after uh, he hit the power bomb on the steel chair, on two steel chairs to Seth Rollins. Then, at the end of the match, Chris Jericho gave a code break with Seth Rollins. I guess that's going to set up a feud between Chris Jericho and Seth Rollins to, like, settle somewhere. Not in Survivor Series, because there's going to be, like, 20 tag team matches in that night. Um, probably, like, 10 main events of Survivor Series. But still, um, might be a TLC. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah, Kevin Owens is still your Universal Champion. Can we just talk about Raw Talk? You guys, you know, they, they announced Raw Talk, which is kind of like... It's the same thing as Talking Smack. Except it's for Raw. But um, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho on Raw Talk, it was bloody fantastic. It was, I think it was the best thing that happened in that night. In, okay, not in the night, but in Raw Talk. It's the best thing that happened in that, in that little uh, show. These two are just awesome. I love them as best friends. When your two favorite pair of heels fit together, it's awesome. I love it. Match of the night. Then we had the Cruiserweight Championship. TJ Perkins was defending his championship against Brian Kendrick. And uh, it was a pretty good match. For a match that was not in the Hell in the Cell, I thought it was a pretty good match. Um, definitely not the match of the night. <laughs> um, but uh, it was still a good match uh, between Brian Kendrick and TJ Perkins. Uh, good heel work by Brian Kendrick by faking an injury, then locking in um, the uh, by locking in TJ Perkins in the bully choke, or whatever the hell they call it nowadays, um... Uh, Brian Kendrick is a new Cruiserweight Champion, which some people may disagree with, but it's, I'm completely fine with it. Who knows? Did T.J. Perkins let Brian Kendrick win? Did he tap out on purpose? Theories. The next one was probably my least, actually, no, my least favorite match with Dana versus Bailey, but this is definitely up there as one of probably the worst match of the night. Um, Cesaro Sheamus versus The New Day. I like all these guys, but... Uh, I'm just going to get straight to it. Cesaro and Sheamus won by disqualification. The New Day once again using heel tactics to retain the championship titles. That's not good. That's not what baby faces do. They don't get themselves disqualified just to retain the tag team titles. It's stupid. It's just dumb. And finally, we had the real main event. Charlotte vs. Sasha Banks for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Or the Raw Women's Championship, as it's now called. I don't know why Charlotte is now um, referred to as Charlotte Flair. I'm just going to keep calling her Charlotte. I really don't care. Um, <clears throat> the People are saying this is match of the night because of that power bomb through the table. Which, by the way, it was freaking fantastic. And Sasha Banks, who is a woman, has more balls than me. Um, I would not take a power bomb through the table. I'll probably die. How, did Sasha ba- How is Sasha Banks still alive is something beyond me. But uh, anyways, people are saying that's the reason it's match of the night. But remember, that wasn't part of the match. So you can't include that as part of the match. So you can't say it's match of the night because of that one spot. As big as it was, it was not part of the match. It was, I believe it's the best Hell in the Cell pre-segment since Mick Foley going through the Hell in the C- Going through the freaking table. Like he Undertaker threw Mick Foley off the top of the cell. Right through the announce table. That's a bloody good spot. Same by Charlotte and Sasha Banks. For women, for people saying that women don't belong in Hell in a Cell, well, there's a proof that they do indeed do. They do belong in Hell in a Cell. They use that cell like a freaking weapon. Um, but for some reason, uh, Hell in a Cell was mo- mostly about uh, tables because apparently wooden tables are more lethal than giant steel cages or cells. Uh, but anyways... 
Bar bump through a table, freaking awesome. I couldn't tell whether or not Sasha was hurt. She's so good at selling stuff. Like when Sasha takes moves, you when she takes bumps, you wonder was it real? Was it fake? She just sells it so good. I really thought she was legitimately hurt. I really thought she broke her neck or something. She was crying for freak's sake. But um, yeah, uh, Sasha Banks had that never say die attitude, you know, like Rusev. And she faced Charlotte. They had a really good match. I think it was the second best match of the night. I give it four stars. Um, four stars out of five, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, good match all around. They used tables, which I didn't... Which they didn't really, like... You know, the wooden tables, they didn't really have good spots with that. The chair shots was a, was a uh, nice touch. Um... The monkey flip on the cell was freaking fantastic. The whole match was just great. Um, it was great seeing when women's wrestling it just gets better and better every single day. And it's just awesome. Women's wrestling is awesome. They do not, they, Sasha and Charlotte make you not miss the brown panties match, which I don't get why you miss those. They're awful. Anyways, Charlotte and Sasha Banks, good match. Charlotte won. Once again, they're playing Hot Potato. The same thing they did with John Cena Randy Orton in 2009. Oh, no. That's not how you make a championship prestigious, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, Charlotte uh, won after she had uh, the natural selection. It was a pretty rubby finish. But still, great match. Uh, I still think Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins had match at night. But, uh, still... Great match. I can't take anything away from it. No one can. You can't. Like, not even the anti four horsemen people can ruin that moment. It's just freaking fantastic. I'm so happy for the both of them. I'm so proud of them. Women's wrestling. Better and better. Every single day. They make history. Every single day. Holy crap. It's just beautiful. And that's it for my WWE Hell in a Cell 2016 results review. What do you guys think of Hell in a Cell? Tell me in the comments below. Any support such as liking, sharing, subscribing is greatly appreciated. You can follow me on Twitter at the underscore real Marv. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.